God bless you. Apostle Fields here. There's so much excitement in the air as we approach the month of September. And you know September always brings something very special for the people of God. That's the Apostolic United Conference. September 19th through the 22nd, people of God from all over the country and different parts of the world will be coming into Greater Refuge Temple to praise God, to worship, to celebrate everything God has done for his people. And we're coming to fortify and to affirm that prayer that Jesus prayed, Lord, make them one. Knowing that division is not his will, we're coming together no matter what reformation we're from, and we're focusing on Christ. He's the centerpiece of all that we do. Thursday night, Bishop William Wilkins will be ministering. Friday night, Bishop Lambert Gates. And on Saturday, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. And closing us out on Sunday morning, Elder David Hollis. And of course, that great conference choir led by Elder Michael Chamberlain will be singing nightly. And we have a guest psalmist who will be backed up with our very own praise team here at GRTDC. Sister Alicia P. Jordan will be with us, leading us into the presence of the Lord. Come on, get ready and meet us here at the temple. We're going to have a time. I promise you, you won't leave the same way that you came. Shalom.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him this morning. Nobody like the Lord. I said there's nobody like the Lord. Do y'all believe what we're singing about this morning? I believe this is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. God desires to inhabit the praises of his people. Lift up your head. Come on now and lift up them holy hands without wrath or doubt. And give your God the praise, that's honor, that's due unto his name. There's nobody like him in all the earth. There's nobody like him in the universe. There's only one God and he reigns supreme. And we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We ought to lift up our voices with a voice of triumph. Declare the Lord he is God. God, hallelujah. I say declare with your hand clap. Hallelujah. Declare he is Lord. Stomp your feet. Let the devil know we got victory in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. I said our God reigns. Hallelujah. He's in control. I say he's in control. Nothing gets by him. Nothing gets past him. He knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Let us rise to our feet in this place. You know what time it is. Hallelujah. This is the house of the Lord. This is called the house of prayer for all people. Everyone is welcome here. Everybody got a voice in here. And we ought to lift up our voice unto our king. Because he's worthy. I don't know about you, but I'm excited this morning. I don't know why they sang that song. But hallelujah, there's nobody like my God. Amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. He woke us up this morning. Yes, he did. He put breath in your body this morning. He had mercy this morning. Isn't he faithful? Hallelujah. We're going to go before the throne of God. Amen. In prayer this morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is in his throne. He's in his holy temple. Hallelujah. And this is the hour of prayer where we come before the Lord this morning. I want you to remember the bereaved family. We lost a dear loved one this, in our sanctuary, in our congregation. Bishop Hargrove, amen. We want to lift up Mother Hargrove and the Hargrove family as we go before the Lord in prayer, amen. And remember the sick, hallelujah. Remember those that desire to be in the house and can't be here this morning, but you are here, amen. So let's go before the throne this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord. We know who you are. You went to Calvary's cross for us, Lord. You shed your blood for us, Lord God. You presented the ultimate sacrifice that we could not pay, Lord. And for that, we have offered us an opportunity to come boldly to your throne this morning. And we come in today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We come today just as we are, Lord. We ask you to search our hearts, search our minds today, Lord. God, if there's anything in the way, oh God, if there's anything that's not like you, Lord God. We renounce it today. Hallelujah. We repent from our sins. and Hallelujah. Our weaknesses, oh God, you already know, Lord. And that's why we come in this morning for strength. Hallelujah. Somebody needs strength this morning. Oh God, we ask you, oh God, to let your spirit and your anointing fill this place one more time, God. Let your anointing, oh God, that destroys the yoke, oh God. Set the captives free. Hallelujah. To bring deliverance. Hallelujah. To open up the blind eye, God, we ask you for that anointing. Hallelujah. Your miracle working power to be in the midst of us today, Lord. Lift up the hung down heads, oh God. Lift up the burning hearts today, Lord God. Oh God, remember the bereaved families, oh God. Hallelujah. Some are struggling with the loss of their loved ones, God. But Lord, remind us that you are right by our side. You're the God of comfort. You're the one that giveth and you're the one that taketh away. And we, oh God, want to give you the glory. We want to bless Bless your holy name this morning, Lord God. We thank you today for every soul that's in this building, oh God. Some came here weary and hung down, Lord God. And somebody, hallelujah, is seeking.
seeking for salvation. Somebody don't have the Holy Ghost and desire to be saved. They're seeking to live eternally with you, Lord God. We ask you to bless today, Lord God. Let there be a revival break out in this place, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That souls, oh God, will be healed, saved, and delivered, Lord Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Touch our hearts today, Lord Jesus. Touch our minds. Give us the focus that we need in this last day, Lord. We're living amongst evil times, oh God. But we want to live holy. We want to live righteous. We want to live so that you can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come on up. Hallelujah. We got a place to go because you have prepared it for us. We want to be ready as a prepared people for a prepared place this morning, Lord God. Let our conscience, oh God, be renewed by the word of God as the word goes forth this morning by the man of God as he stands in this pulpit. We ask you to send another anointing in this place. Let it rest upon our pastor, Lord Jesus. Uh, Apostle Michael Fields, as he come before your people to present the word of God that you want us to hear. Give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church, Lord God, that we may be the people of God, that we be peculiar, that we will stand out, that we will be bold in our holiness, oh God, that we'll be a witness for you, oh God, everywhere that we go, Lord. We ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, uh, we thank you for the land that we live in right now, God. Uh, Lord, we ask you to bless the leaders throughout this land. Uh, God, we ask you to bless the president, oh God, hello, vice president, Lord Jesus, uh, those that sit on the seat of Congress and even in the judgment seats throughout the land, God. We need your help, oh God. Uh, we need you to touch their hearts, Lord, because uh, we desire to live a quiet and peaceful life, uh, to serve you, to build your kingdom in this hour, in the name of Jesus. Now, bless our so God, our praise team, as they go forth and continue to lead us in worship. Bless the old musicians as they play skillfully, oh God. And we thank you and we praise you because you've been so good. We thank you and we praise you because you've been so good. Now, God, hallelujah, bless the rest of this service in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. I would like to read to you from Isaiah, the 55th chapter, familiar verses of scripture. Amen. I'm going to read 55, starting at verse number six. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got your Bibles. Turn with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing like the bread of life. Nothing like the word of God. It's eternal. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, it brings joy to your soul and peace to your mind. Amen. Verse 6, and I'm going to read down to verse number 9. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my God. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his eternal word. Let it be sanctified in your hearts that we may live thereby in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a praise in this place.
darkness. You bring hope.
pour out our praise. It's your breath, Lord, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Only because of you we live. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to. Everybody ought to. Everybody ought to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm here to welcome all of our first time visitors, both in the temple and joining us virtually. If by chance we have any first time visitors, we ask that you stand in Jesus name. Amen, amen. Come on Greater Refuge Temple, let's love on them. Amen, God bless you, God bless you. Well, my oldest daughter, whenever I ask her to do something, she says, I got you mom. I ask her, can you bring the laundry basket upstairs? I got you, mom. Can you go and take the dog out? I got you, mom. Well, the Lord is no different. When we say, Father, we need a blessing, he says, I got you. When we say, Father, we need a healing, he says, I got you. When we say, Father, we need a way made, he said, I got you. We said, Lord, we need salvation. And he said, I got you. Hallelujah. On behalf of our pastor, Apostle W. Michael Fields, our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young Sr., we greet you in that wonderful, adorable name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if by chance you do not have a church home, won't you consider this temple of worship where we know the Lord has got us. God bless you in Jesus' name.
glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope everyone feel welcome. Welcome to Greater Refuge Temple. Praise God. We're so glad to have you. Amen. And fellowship with us today. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. God is good. Oh, yes, he is. He's good all the time. No matter your situation, God is good. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And certainly we thank and praise God for another time he has brought us together. Amen. To worship him. Amen. With his good self. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Those of you that are watching, amen, we, uh, live screen, amen, YouTube, and Facebook, we welcome you. Hallelujah. To fellowship with us today in Jesus' name. I'm talking about that good God. Hallelujah. The one that is able and will sustain you. Give you all the comfort you need. No matter your situation, God is there for you. Glory to God. Mighty God. It's offering time. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you now to prepare yourself to be a blessing unto the house of God. Thank you, Jesus, for we serve an almighty good God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Our deacons and ushers are taking their place. We ask you to do the same. Amen. We ask you to stand to your feet and prepare to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Father, we do love you and we praise you, God. We give all glory and honor to you. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely this day to this place. God, as we come to be a blessing to this house of God. We ask you to bless the giver, oh God. Let this offering be used for the building of that kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask you now to turn and face the walls and come under the direction of our ushers. In Jesus' name.
Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Certainly we thank you. We praise God for all you have given today in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. And go on and say all the time. God is good. Amen. Thank you for your giving today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, amen, we will be the guest of the New Jerusalem Temple Church today. Now, the service starts at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. The service starts. So it's a lot of time they be in there praising the Lord, getting it on, having a wonderful time. And here we come, dragging in. Service have already started. Listen, we're the guests. <laughs> Let's be there at 5 p.m. Amen. Then when the service go over 7, <laughs> you're not happy. But you're a part of that because you didn't get there at 5 p.m. And it's right around the corner. It's not that far away. 5 p.m. For you military minds. 1,700 hours. Let's be there in Jesus' name. We're going to have a wonderful time. Praise God. I'm looking forward to it in Jesus' name. The last AUC 24 choir rehearsal will be Saturday, September the 14th here. 1300 hours 1 p.m. Okay. And also the region 3 man meeting on September the 28th in Sheraton Hill, PA. We have a bus going to be going from here. Praise the Lord. So if you want to go, amen, you need to see amen our um secretary, praise God, and they will put you on the list. Amen. So we're good to go, right? Amen. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here is our pastor, Apostle Will Michael Fields. Come on, give God a praise for him as he comes in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus some praise. He's worthy. Come on. Come on and give him glory. He's worthy. Bless him today. If he's been good to you, give him praise. If he's been good to you, give him glory. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. He did not deal with you according to your iniquity. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Listen, it's not a cliche. Look at somebody say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. What does it say? Hallelujah! Listen, don't you come to his house and not praise him. Don't you come in his presence and don't praise him. Don't you come in here and sit under his goodness. I'm going to open your mouth and praise him. Praise him. Because he's worthy of the prayer. And had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. If you won't praise him, I will. I'll do it all by myself if I have to. Scream down your row and say, if you won't, I will. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the more I praise him, the better I feel. Yes, sir. And the more I praise him, I've had a rough week, but the more I praise him, I've had some difficulties, but the more I praise him, the better I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. You better praise him in this place. Oh, shot. Oh, glory. Praise him till you feel his glory. Oh. Ah. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. High five somebody say, I came here to have church. I didn't come here to play. You don't know what I had to deal with this week. I didn't come here to play no games. I came to give God the glory. Yeah. Ooh. All right. All right, sit down, sit down. Sun double. Whoa! Something happens when the people of God praise him. The whole atmosphere will shift. Oh, God.
Yeah. Some of you haven't praised him yet. Holy Ghost is waiting on you. Some of y'all ain't praised him yet. Lift up your voice and shout out a praise. I want to see if you can praise him without music. I want to see if you can praise him without a drum. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Father, we bless your holy name today. We ask that you would move among us through your word. Send your word with power and demonstration of your Holy Spirit. We'll continue to give your name the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name we pray amen just slip those hands won't you there is a very strong anointing flowing in this place yeah and whenever it gets like this you need to take your time plug into the move of God he doesn't want anybody to leave without a blessing. Yeah. Just lift your hands and worship. And receive what he wants to do for you right now. You don't have to wait for the altar call to get what you need. You can get what you need right now. Hey, Shandama Siandalo. Yes. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Yeah, Jesus. Bless him. Glory. Put those hands together, won't you? Give the Lord some praise. I honor the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the boss and I do love him. He has been so good to us and to our assistant pastor, Elder Young, to all of the people of God, the deacons and mothers and missionaries, our musicians, our 
even our ushers, we thank God for them. To all of the people, yeah. All of you that are here today and those of you who have connected with us via live stream, we honor you also. Thanking God. Once again, he has brought us together. And certainly, I believe that whatever ha is happening in this house, because you've connected with us, it's happening where you are in your house. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So whatever chains are being broken here, he's breaking them over there. Our God is just that good. He's able even to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Mark Bain. We have lost one of our soldiers, our generals in the Lord, Bishop Hargrove. Won't you stand with me just for a moment of silence in honor of him? He, the Lord has given him long life and he has seen fit to take him from our ranks and certainly to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yet in all the scriptures we can quote the pain and the feeling of loss is real. And the only way his family and those who are close to him can make it through the season is with God's help. That's the only way. So let's have a moment of silence for him, shall we? a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yea saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them father bless your word this morning as I give them what you've given me turn with me won't you to a familiar passage of scripture the 34th Psalm, one verse, that's the 19th verse, Psalm 34, verse 19. Father, bless your preached word, send it with power. Psalm 34, verse number 19. Before we read it, look at somebody and say, this word is just for you. A personal word from God just to you. Yeah. Some of you didn't say it. Look at him and say, this word is just for you. It's a personal word from God straight to you. Let's read that 19th verse together in concert. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth him out of them all read it again many are the afflictions of the righteous the Lord delivered read it again read it one more time for the people in the back many are the afflictions of the righteous Before you sit down, look at someone and give them the message on this morning. Tell them these words. There is a promise attached to this problem. You may be seated. Yeah, look at someone else. Tell them there is a promise attached to this problem. Yeah. 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 
I'm in awe of God for many reasons. And those of us who think of him often can reflect and would concur with what I'm saying. The more we think about him, the more amazed we become, the more we learn to trust him, the more we experience with him. It's amazing when you look back and see all of the lessons that you've learned and those things you may still be in the process of learning. But no one that knows the Lord and has taken time to even seek him and get to know him can say anything negative concerning his character or his intent. The more you know about him, the more you love him. Yeah. And the more he takes you through, the more you experience with him, the more you learn how to trust him. And I will admit there are situations that may look different, smell different. It, unexpected things have happened to throw you off. But he was there when your life seems unbalanced, when things go wrong. Sometimes things go so crazy until you declare your whole world has been turned upside down. But even in your awkwardness, God is there. Anyone know what I'm talking about? We didn't just get this way. We, we've been through some things, some, some pain, some, some anguish. Just this year, don't have to go too far, but many of us can stand up right now and say it's been rough so far it hasn't been easy don't listen I, I don't want you to take all of this singing and shouting as a sign that we're not going through anything <laughs> don't you don't, don't get it twisted i don't i don't want you to think just because you a few moments ago we were just screaming and hollering that we don't have bills to pay and this we don't, we don't have headaches, we don't have enemies. Oh, in spite of that, we know that in the midst of all these things, we serve a good God. And though situation after situation arises, God is with us. Three things, meditation, the Lord gave me three things he's doing. In the midst of our problems, our troubles, he's preparing, he's protecting, and he's providing. Say it with me, he's preparing, he's protecting, he's providing. He's not only preparing me, but he's preparing the blessing for me. He's making sure that when I get to that place he promised I would get to, that it will be ready for me, and I'll be ready to receive what he has prepared for me. He's not a sloppy God. He's not a half-do God. He's, I've never known God to just throw stuff together and say, here, take that. No, everything the Lord has ever given me, I can tell he took his time. Love is all in the blessing, and he took time. There's nothing out of place. And he's getting you prepared. So when you get there, everybody will know that it was God that brought you there. And I know he's protecting because there were days when, hallelujah, you moved in the wrong direction. And what could have happened to you did not happen to you. There were folks, people, things, principalities waiting for you to slip up, and you did. Had it not been for God watching over you, I hear Jude 
screaming in my spirit, saying, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And I know the saints, when you start talking about difficulties and mistakes, they cringe because they don't want you to know they messed up sometimes. But do I have anyone in here honest enough to raise their hand and say, there have been days when I messed up and he should have walked away. He should have let go of my hand. He should have let whatever I stepped in overwhelm and take me out. Hallelujah. But when the enemy rushed in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raised the standard. And when I didn't feel good about myself, he came and talked to me when nobody else would. Held me when no one else would. And he had to even protect me from my own thoughts. Because I wanted to let go. And he wouldn't let me let go. I wanted to give up and he didn't want me to give up. He wouldn't let me even sit down. There were times when I closed my mouth. Didn't want to sing another song. And that's when the Holy Ghost sang in my spirit. Hallelujah. Touch somebody say, you'll sing again. Yes, you will. You'll, you'll sing again. And he provides. He makes ways out of no way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Testify to somebody. Say, he makes ways out of no way. He provides. He even takes care of our physical needs. Hallelujah. He feeds us when we're, we're hungry. And I hear you talking. I'm grown. I work every day. I buy my own groceries. But I hear the word speak back and say, I give power to obtain wealth. I've never seen a dead man get dressed for work. I've never seen a dead man collect a check if it was not God giving you life. He gives us rest. He provides direction. He gives us grace to make it through the situations that we're in. Hallelujah. I heard Paul tell the Corinthian church, he says these words, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you having always, having all sufficiency in all things. You may abound to every good work. Have you ever wondered how you were able to thrive when others had lost their job? And I've, I've seen the saints lose their job, but they never missed a meal. Bills were paid. Hallelujah. Just look, at, look around the room. Never missed a meal. Bills were paid. Still have a roof over your head. Helps us when we're hurting. Saves us even from our own bad decisions. He is a wonderful Savior. And he takes all of these things and he makes us what he wants us to be. Doesn't allow what we've been through or what happened to us. He does not allow it to destroy us. I believe Paul had this in mind when he discussed it again with the Corinthian believers and said, we're persecuted but not dis forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. He's letting the church know that there's a purpose for your pain. There's a reason why. And no matter whether you did it to yourself or they did it to you, God takes the pain and produces, hallelujah, a masterpiece in you. I heard Paul say, we are his workmanship. He's conforming us into the image of his dear son. And there's a discussion that might be difficult for some because there are some saints who feel like I'm never supposed to go through anything. Hallelujah. Just come and shout and go back home. Wait till next week. Come back and shout some more. But no, I've got to live this thing and work out my own soul salvation. And there will be trouble sometimes. There will be problems. There will be persecution. 
can't get away from it. But I hear Paul say to the congregation, even today, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. The writing that we read coming out of the book of Psalms, the whole wording that Paul writes, rather, that David writes in this particular psalm is really letting us know that our praise should be a perpetual praise. That 34th psalm, that piece of music that he's writing, when you get into the history of the text, you understand the situation behind his praise. Hallelujah. That's another thing people don't realize, that when we're praising God, a lot of times we're still in the midst of a situation. Hallelujah. We're simply praising our way out, praising our way out of the struggle or the situation that we're going through. So I need you to put this disclaimer out and tell somebody on your road, there's a situation behind my praise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you all my business, but I want you to know that uh, I'm going through something, but I'm not going to let that stop me from giving God the, the glory. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be. And I'm not going to give up because I know that's what the devil expects me to do. Yes, but I'm going to praise God because I know he's able to see me through. The Hebrew calls it Tehillim, which properly signifies a psalm of praise. There were many pieces of music, of course, that David wrote. Hallelujah. But he wanted everybody to know, although I'm going through this situation, it's not going to stop me from singing my psalm. Giving God the glory. Hallelujah. I want you to know, and it is a message that David would oftentimes let the people around him know. Even on one occasion when he returns from war, he's bleeding and blood is dripping on the outer court. And the soldiers are standing behind him. And he knows that there were certain people in his court that set him up sent him out on the battlefield, and there was a conspiracy. They were even betting that King David would not make it back from this battle, but he appears. He shows up on time for worship and says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. And he changed the song. In the midst of their chanting, he cries out, raises his bloody hand, and says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to praise him anyway. Yes, you may have set me up, but I'm still going to praise him. Talked about me, but I'm still going to praise him. Talked about me like a dog, but I'm still going to praise. Ran my name down, but I'm still going to. I know I wasn't supposed to make it, but I'm here. May as well get used to it because I've got a voice and I'm going to praise my God. Scream at somebody say, I have a voice and I'm going to praise my God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him the praise and the glory. The superscription above this piece of music tells me that David wrote it when the Philistines, hallelujah, seized him in Gath. It was not too long after he slays the giant Goliath in the battle of the valley of Elah. Hallelujah. And you understand that story. And you know that although David was small, he kills a giant that's about ten and a half feet tall. For 40 days, Goliath terrorized the Israelites, saying, where is your God, this, this God, Jehovah, hallelujah, that's supposed to take care and protect his people? Here's this little fella popping up with a slingshot in his hat. 
Hallelujah. And he slays Goliath there. And it spelled triumph for David. People started singing about his triumph. But it brings trouble also from Saul. I want you to know that everybody's not going to be happy about your victory. Everybody's not going to be happy about the progress you make in the kingdom. Some folks are are going to look at you and get mad hallelujah, because you made it through that test or that trial. Saul becomes jealous of David. I often wonder why there are so many Sauls in the church. Hallelujah. People, uh, instead of getting their own blessing, they, hallelujah, they get upset because they see God using you or blessing you. And they resent the fact that you're moving and they know you should be dormant. They know your background. They know where you come from. And they're mad that God decided to use you. Hallelujah. Yes, that's why they're mad. They'll, they'll sit right next to you in church and get angry at your praise and uh, want to know what you got to praise God for. And a lot of times, sometimes it's because they've been running their mouths about folk all week long. And uh, all they had to do was do what you did. I got on my knees and said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. I don't have no help nowhere. You're the only one that can help me. Hallelujah. There's nothing so special about me that I should have what I have and uh, praise him the way that I praise him. But I, I found him in my dark place. I'm, uh, I learned how to pray even when I didn't feel like praying. Uh, I learned how to reach out in the midnight when my tears are coming down my face and say, Lord, help me and because he's a God that hears my cry even Dave testified and said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his trouble but now Saul is angry he's uh, he's upset here this little fella he didn't even have armor on he hallelujah he didn't even have a sword in his hand just uh, just a slingshot and five uh, smooth stones and understand that David was so confident in his God that he did not go and get one stone but he got five and I need you to understand he didn't get five in other words to say that in case I miss him I've got four more tries no he understood the rule he understood the word of God because even in the Hebrew context and what they were taught if you kill someone people in their family have a right to come and kill you you remember Old Testament hallelujah mentality eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth when you read Deuteronomy and Leviticus you'll understand that it was understandable if I murder someone in your house unless I get Get to one of those cities of refuge, there'll be no help for me. Anyone in that family could track me down and take my life. Goliath had four brothers. Uh, and so what David was saying, I've got a stone for every giant. Oh, I heard that in my spirit. Look down your row and say, I want you to know that I have a stone for every giant in my life. Oh, that went over some of y'all head. But the, testify to somebody and say, I have a stone for every demon in my life. He was confident in his God. Hallelujah. And just like I took Goliath out, that's the trouble with some of us. You're not confident enough in God. If God brought me out of this, he'll take me out of that. So, the, hallelujah. And Saul was upset. Who is this, this upstart, this young lad with all of this 
faith had the nerve how you to say to Goliath I've come in the name of the Lord and uh, David opened his mouth and said the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and uh, hallelujah he had to be delivered even from Saul you remember the history hallelujah there were several times that Saul took a javelin and tried to take David out I don't mean hurt him he tried to take David out hallelujah but David was the instrument that God used to calm the evil in Saul. He would give David songs and David would sing in Saul's chamber. And hallelujah, while he was singing, that demonic spirit went back down and Saul would become calm. Hallelujah. But as soon as Saul thought about the fact that God had anointed David, hallelujah, he would try to take his life, but David, he understood his assignment, he would come right back and sing another song, I need to help somebody right here, don't you let what your enemies are doing keep you from fulfilling your assignments, don't you allow the struggle or the animosity that people are showing towards you stop you from getting in the presence of God and fulfilling your your assignments. I need you to look around the room again before I start preaching and I want you to tell somebody although I'm not supposed to be here I'm on assignments. I'm here because God brought me here. You got to learn how to talk. Don't just come to church and look around. You got to learn how to open your mouth and say I'm on assignments. I'm not just a member here. I'm on assignment. I know where I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. God has blessed me to do what I'm doing. And, and he promised that he would keep me from all evil. No wonder Paul said he shall deliver me from every evil work so David understands hallelujah and he lives his life moving closer to his purpose and everything God had in store for him and David would proclaim everywhere he went that the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness but if you know his story you understand that there were contradictions in his story now I need you to understand that everybody in this room has contradictions in their story if you tell the truth there are contradictions I'm speaking in tongues now but you know there was a day when hallelujah speaking in tongues didn't come out my mouth but people will use what you did against you for where you are now. Oh, yes, they will. Have you ever run into somebody you haven't seen? And they may be a believer just like you. And all of a sudden, in the conversation, they'll bring up something in your past. You remember this. You remember that. You need to stop them when they do that and say used to be but not anymore and David yes he made mistakes even after God brought him to where he wanted him to be but David not only learned how to rejoice he learned how to repent and say create in me a clean heart I've got an issue with people that know how to rejoice, but they don't know how to repent. 
<laughs> you can speak in tongues, but you can't say, I'm sorry. I got an issue with people that can say, he a Messiah, and can say, excuse me. He said, Lord, if you see anything in me that should not be, take it away. Search me, old God. Uh, hallelujah lean on somebody they may not want to be touched right now but lean on somebody and say don't just be a rejoicer uh, you gotta learn how to repent uh, and repentance is not just a one time thing you've got to live a life of repentance uh, Lord if I said the wrong thing uh, forgive me for every wrong thought every wrong word I want to be right I want to be whole lift your hands and say yay Lord so you were saying to the naysayer what kind of righteousness is David talking about hallelujah he messed with somebody else's wife he, uh, he committed murder yes he did he sent the man uh, and put him on the front line he, uh, he not only sinned but he would cover up for his wrongdoing so what kind of righteousness uh, hallelujah understand let's go to bible class real quick because uh, when you deal with righteousness there's what's called uh, positional and uh, practical righteousness uh, the first kind of righteousness is uh, the perfect obedience that God requires uh, for our justification and salvation and, uh, that's why Jesus when he spoke to the church uh, he said be ye therefore perfect uh, even as your father which is in heaven uh, is perfect now understand though uh, when he says perfection he knows that there is no good thing in my flesh hallelujah he understands it but know that he was not just Lord and Savior he was talking as a priest a Levitical priest who is saying keep the Lord's statutes and if a man does this he will live in them meaning God will live in you he'll do it through you if you obey his word so understand that when David he's not a New Testament saint hallelujah but he's dealing with an issue that we have in grace he understood even then that I can't do it in my flesh I can't be holy of myself only God can perform this through my life that's why Paul said we are the righteousness of God he performs he lives through us in him I live and breathe he moves me he speaks through me he lives through me hallelujah we get this righteousness from God his perfect obedience is imputed to us and he puts it on my account when I put my faith in him this righteousness makes me positionally righteous in other words fields I know you can't live right on your own but if you follow my direction if you let me live through you I'll put you in a place where you will be declared righteous because of me living in you hallelujah so though you're guilty the charges will be dropped against you and though you did it though you said it if you let me live through you 
I'll make you a contradiction to everything you used to be. So when the devil sees you, he will no longer recognize you as his own. I'll bring you out and I'll take what you were in out of you. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And that positional righteousness, it attributes to faithful servants who live a life of faith. The just shall live by faith and they seek to obey his voice and your godliness increases hallelujah the more you live for him the more godly you become I know you speak in tongues but you don't get this thing overnight you don't get to be holy overnight don't let people trick you and hand you a hat and a scarf and say now you're holy baby that's a lie it's a day by day process I had to learn how to be like this I had to learn how to walk I had to learn how to talk touch somebody and say I didn't get here overnight oh God they don't want to talk to you talk to somebody else and tell them I didn't get here overnight I'm still learning I still got a process to go through but I thank God I'm not where I used to be no, no, I'm not what I used to be. You, you'd have a whole lot of trouble if I was. But thanks be to God, He turned my life. He turned it all around. So, in spite of all of his sins, when you evaluate David's life as a whole, hallelujah, God looked him and said there is a man after mine own heart now some folks I know were mad when they heard that cause they read his bio they saw his mistakes they knew his mess ups hallelujah but I heard sister Basil say God looks at us and says I got you Oh, I feel that in my big toe. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, let me put it out on the table. I did it. I said it. I was there. But God brought me out. He looked beyond my faults. And they saw my need. I don't know why he blessed me, but I'm glad he did. I don't know why he chose me, but I'm glad that he did. I don't know why he anointed me, but I'm glad that he did. So don't get mad at me. Talk to my boss. He made it like this. Hallelujah. He was rewarded deliverance from his enemies because he was faithful to God. And he wasn't afraid to say, Lord, I did it. I messed up. But please don't take your spirit away from me. I can't make it without you. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be removed. I feel like preaching in here. 
And as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, God surrounds his people. Thank you, Lord. David knew that if I hold on to God's word, if I stay on the altar, he'll deliver me. He'll save me from my enemies. Hallelujah. He's hiding when he writes this piece of music. He's in a cave hiding from Saul. He's not the king yet. But Saul is angry now because there's a new song going through the city that he the top ten chart Saul has slain a thousand but David has slain ten thousand and Saul wanted to kill him and take him out listen child of God that's why the enemy has been chasing after you so hard cause you're still here Still got the praise in your mouth. Still testifying. Still trying to live holy. Sick of your song. He hates it when you get up and say, I've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. He hates to hear you praise God. And he put a hit out on you. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, I got you. No weapon that's formed against you. Can I preach in here? Shall prosper. Point to somebody and say, No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Hallelujah. It'll come to pass that if you hearken to my voice, hallelujah, and do everything I tell you, I'll set you on high, I'll anoint you above your brothers, and I'll bless you so much until even your enemies will be confused about your blessing how did it get here how did you get all that scream at your neighbor say it was God he brought me here he delivers I wouldn't be here now if he didn't know how to get me out of what I had to deal with I would have lost my mind hallelujah but the Lord kept me thank you Lord he rescued me even from myself thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord anybody beside me can say he delivers oh yes he does I found somebody and say I know he delivers cause he delivered me I haven't always been saved and even after I got in the church there were some things he had to bring me out of who will testify and go over to somebody and say even against myself he kept me when I strayed he pulled me back in when I fell he picked me back up I was lost he found me say yeah 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 Thank you, Lord. Walk over to somebody and say, Look at.
at me I haven't always been free look at me I didn't always want to praise him but he turned me around yeah David said he brought me out of a horrible pit set my feet upon a rock and establish my going he turned my life around look at somebody and turn around for them say he turned my life around yeah 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 devil don't like it but I don't care I'm better now thank you father but he's still in the cave hallelujah with 600 men and the Bible says in 2nd Samuel they were in content of course some of them had bills some of them were depressed hallelujah they were all in danger of losing their life but in the midst of the praise that David stirs up in the cave I need to park right here and tell somebody you might not like where you are but the Holy Ghost told me to tell you learn how to stir something up you may not like how you feel but stir something up even if there are tears in your eyes get out of that bed and have church all by yourself stir something up walk over to your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know what you're going through but I got a word for you right now stir something up sing a song send up a praise do whatever you gotta do and that's why David said I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in the Lord the humble shall hear the and be glad do I have anybody else that wants to praise him do I have anybody else that wants to give him glory do I have anybody else that loves him like I do and oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together put your arms around somebody and send neighbor I don't care what you're going through we can still have chats I don't care about what's happening around we can still have chats open up your mouth and bless him open up your mouth and praise him open up your mouth and give him glory and while they were praising while they were singing David starts preaching and says the face of the Lord is against him that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles say yeah the Lord is close to them that are of a broken heart and saves those that have a contrite spirit and then it says many 
I found your neighbor and says many of the afflictions I feel my help of the righteous hallelujah turn around look at the person behind you and say many come on help me preach say many of the afflictions of the righteous hey God they don't want to hear it turn to somebody else and say many the afflictions of the righteous oh God I'm not an English teacher but I know the next word is called the conjunction hallelujah it's used to introduce a phrase it's called the contrasting praise it contradicts with the statement that's already been made I know you're going through but I know you got trouble in your life I know you got bills to pay I know you've been sick in your body I know you're having trouble trying to make ends meet he said many of the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord but the Lord but Jehovah Jireh but Jehovah Nisi but Jesus will deliver him out of them all let me show you something whenever you see the word but in the word of God is often used to introduce a message of God's grace and compassion but there's a word I want to plug into your spirit high five your neighbor and say intervention oh God there's gonna be a Holy Ghost intervention in your situation hallelujah I'm gonna come and mess up everything the devil's been doing I'm gonna knock on the door and sit on your couch and deal with your situation did you hear what I said high five your neighbor and say intervention has arrived I'm bringing you out 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 that's all I hear in my spirit tell them I'm bringing them out put your arms around somebody and say there's a promise attached to that problem he won't leave you he won't let you die he's bringing you out say yeah say yeah say yeah there is a promise attached to that problem many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all not some of them all of them all lift your hands where you are I've got to stop the affliction I 
hear the Holy Ghost say, tell them, the affliction is necessary. To some, the affliction is coming to bring us out of pride. To some, it's simply to remind you that you don't know how much time we have. So make the best of what you have now. To some, affliction comes to make us pray put you in a place where you have to spend time with God because you know you wouldn't be praying like that if everything was going right all the time to some the affliction is here so God can reveal to you more of who he is so you'll learn more to lean on him to some it comes simply to make his word come alive in our lives. It's not enough to quote scripture, but the scriptures have to mean something to you. So next time you read about his healing, you know because he healed you. Look at somebody say, I know because he did it for me. Yeah. Did it for me. To some, the affliction comes to produce more fruit. So you're not just a member of a church, but there's actual fruit hanging from your tree. To some, I would say now to all of us, it's to make us like Christ, to be conformed into the image of his dear son so when the enemy looks at you he doesn't see you he sees your daddy yeah. father I've given them your word I pray that you would take the seed that's been planted today bring forth harvest we are your children the sheep of your pasture. So many of us have been going through, but we thank you for your word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you will deliver us out of them all. We see now that there's a promise attached to the problem if we hold on to your word. You'll bring us out. From faith to faith, victory to victory. And in between, we're holding on. Strengthen the hearts and minds of those under the sound of my voice. Help us even to be more determined to hold on to the horns of the altar and to be faithful to your word trusting your word so we can receive all the benefits of your word in Jesus name say it with me in Jesus name now take your sanctified hands and give Jesus some praise oh, come on give him glory The altar is ready. You desire prayer. You have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not been baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Come. We can baptize you now in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. You have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come. The Spirit of the Lord is still moving in this place. Come. You have a special need of prayer. Make your way to the altar touch and agree with the man of God you can receive a blessing from the Lord come the day that you hear my voice harden not your heart come come
Abraham.
Is there one today? You want to make Greater Refuge Temple your place of worship? You want to be a part of this congregation? We ask that you come now so we can extend to you the right hand of fellowship. The doors of the church are open. You want to be a member of Greater Refuge? You want me to be your pastor? Come. Praise is what I getting ready to go I want to get a sacrifice from you I'm not going to tell you how much to give but we know that a sacrifice is giving something that you want feel that you need for yourself but you're saying to the Lord Father I want to give this to you it's not a tithe it's not a regular offering it's a sacrifice and I'm aware that you may not have any money to give in this sacrificial offering to you I say just come touch the basket your obedience then is better than the sacrifice and I pray that the Lord will put something in your hand to give the next time because his word also says I give seed to the sower as long as you're a giver he'll make sure that there's seed in your hand Father, we thank you for what you've done in this place. We cannot pay you for your goodness. We cannot pay you for what you do. But we want to make sacrifice in your presence. We ask that you would receive our sacrifices, even those who have nothing to give at this time. Because of their obedience, they too will receive a blessing. In Jesus' name. Say it with me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone who can stand, stand, won't you? Everyone who's able to stand, stand, turn to the wall and follow the leadership of the usher. Bring your sacrifice. Praise is what I do.
thank you for what you've given. Don't forget we are the guest of New Jerusalem Temple. It's only seven minutes from here, 4026 Galt Place, Northeast. That's 4026 Galt Place, Northeast. Seven minutes from here, 4026 Galt Street. And the uh, service begins at five. Also, the homegoing service for Bishop Hargrove is September 14th. That's next week, Saturday. It's going to be at the Greater Ransom Way of the Cross Church, 90 South Lake Large, Henderson, North Carolina. That's 90 South Lake Lodge, Henderson, North Carolina. If you need the address, you can get it from the administrator's office. Um, 10 a.m. viewing, 11 o'clock is the service. It's going to be in Henderson, North Carolina. Let's stand. Apostolics United Conference, September 19th through the 22nd. Don't want to miss it. Looking forward to the Lord blessing us richly. There'll be saints coming from all over the country, different parts of the world. They'll be coming to Refuge Temple to worship and fellowship September 19th through the 22nd. Father, we thank you for what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen. We thank you for every song. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the fellowship. Now dismiss us from the house, but never, Lord, from your presence. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace be unto you. God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us today in worship. It is my prayer that you are enlightened, enriched, and encouraged by the word of God that went forth. Always praying that the Lord would strengthen your hearts and mind, bring you to a place that he wants you to be always. God is able to do just that. And just in case you are looking for a church home, want you to feel free to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. We'll be glad to take you under watch care and we'll do our very best to help you find a permanent place of worship in your area. We all need the Word of God and we all need a place where we can go and be fed the truth of God. And if you would like to plant a seed in this ministry, you haven't been able to do it yet, feel free, follow the instructions on the bottom of your screen. Our technician will make that information available to you. Admin at grtdc.org. You can send your prayer request, your request for membership, and someone from our staff will get back to you. Looking forward to meeting you again. Join us next week, won't you? But until then, be careful, be prayerful and be holy. Shalom, shalom. bless you and thank you so much.